And yeah, moving on to switching gears from the immunotherapy now to advances, recent advances in targeted therapy, uh, the area of uh, tazometastats in epithelioid sarcoma. Again, a pretty neglected sarcoma till late, um, and till we discovered, you know, we've started learning so much more about the epithelioid sarcoma histopathology, the conventional versus the proximal type, and then detecting the I and I loss and mm -hmm. that pathway being involved in epithelioid sarcoma uh, that came into prominence when EZH2 inhibitors were being mm -hmm. studied. So what is your take on the recent approval for tezometastat, and how do you think our management of epithelioid sarcoma patients is going to change now? Yeah, I think that it's, it's really, it's remarkable in a lot of different ways. It's remarkable that this is a rare type of sarcoma, maybe again, maybe 200, 300 new patients per year yes. in the United That's States, right. so it's very rare. And there is some activity of chemotherapy, but it's really not a very chemosensitive tumor. And even when you have a small epithelioid sarcoma, mm -hmm. a centimeter, say, mm -hmm. on the pinky or finger, the local recurrence rate after surgery is very high. Yeah. And it's really uh, very frustrating as somebody who takes care of patients with epithelioid sarcoma to see multiple local recurrences time and time again and not really being able to change the trajectory very much with chemotherapy. So I think a new agent is clearly needed. Mm -hmm. Tazometastat mm -hmm. is an EZH2 inhibitor, mm -hmm. so it binds to the complex that EZH2 and I and I1 are a part of and disrupts it. And, um, and this complex is very active in the setting of I and I1 loss. Yeah. And so a diagnostic test that our pathologists do in, in the sarcoma world is to test for INI1 expression in any tumor that resembles an epithelioid sarcoma. And, and if we find... an easy test by immunohistochemistry. Yeah, so correct. Yes. Yeah. And so if INI1 is lost, and th then this is a, an opportunity for to treat a patient with epithelioid sarcoma with a first-in-class epigenetically active EZH2 inhibitor that has shown, uh, clearly shown benefit in these patients. Right. The, the challenge remains, it's, it's a rare disease. This, is, this um, FDA approval mm -hmm. is based on a phase one study. Right. Response rates as defined by RESIST, which we all struggle with and don't, we think only shows part of the story, but nonetheless, the response rates were in the 15 to 20% range. So not, not the highest by RESIST, but these patients have such a need and yes. it's, such a, it's such a logical, rational target, makes a lot of sense. And so I think, what it does I think we're really, yeah. gonna use it. It's looking, looking forward to using it. Yes, and I think it really opens the field to discovering this epigenetic modulation further because you know, this is the first ECH2 inhibitor and we know the you know, I and I loss with the SWE SNF complex you know, modulates the EZH2, but maybe there are other inhibitors in that pathway that probably can be modulated further down that have better efficacy. Mm -hmm. But you're right, it's 15% response, and it doesn't seem to, I mean, I think most, like, part of them, they go up to six months, or at least the duration of response is six months, uh, but most of them do end up progressing fairly quick. But do you think you're gonna use this as frontline therapy for patients with epithelioid sarcoma with I and I loss, or are you gonna still start them on chemotherapy and uh, use this in later lines? That's, That's a million, million dollar <laughs> question. We know that doxorubicin-based regimens have some activity, yes. probably also in the 15 to 20% range. Gemcitabine docetaxel combination mm -hmm. has probably the similar activity. Some people may say a little bit a little more bit activity. Yeah, so in my practice, we either start with gemcitabine docetaxel or we start with tazometastat as their, as their initial therapy. We prefer to do it in patient with a measurable lesion mm -hmm. so that we can assess response to therapy. Mm -hmm. um, tazometastat is very well tolerated. Mm -hmm. Side effects are very minimal. So if there's somebody who has any comorbidities, is older, is frail, um, I may start with tazometastat initially as their initial regimen. And you do the 800 milligrams twice a day dosing, the yeah. standard? Okay. standard. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of monitoring, as you said, yeah, it's well tolerated, some fatigue, asthenias, and GI toxicity, but do you get them back every two weeks for labs initially, or how often are you following them in terms I, of monitoring? We usually do every two weeks for the first month, and then we start going to monthly after that. And if they're doing great, we even back off 
from that maybe every two months, but we still do follow their labs. I think that's an important, important part of any new agent because it's so new, we still don't know all of the long-term term toxicities. Liver toxicities in CB, yeah, so the CBC needs to be monitored. One, one thing I was wondering about yes. is, you know, what your thoughts are on other types of sarcoma. EZH2 in this complex plays a role in other types of sarcoma, not just epithelioid sarcoma. May be important in synovial sarcoma right. and some others. And I just Lambda wonder tumors, and because we do have I and I loss mm -hmm. in other tumors. Yeah. So the question is, when it gets approved, I mean, if we do check for those subtypes with a higher percentage of I and I loss, and we detect it, mm -hmm. or in that SMARC, you know, in the complex, uh, yeah. other abnormalities, shouldn't we be treating them with this? But I think, you know, more data would be needed. I yeah. think we need to be, you know, studying it further in those subtypes exactly. and hopefully the next trial would exactly. be inclusive of those subtypes yes. as well. I'd like to see that type of trial where maybe we can expand the use of this, of, of agents that agents, target this yes. pathway because it's gonna be important in other types of sarcoma as well. Correct, and as we see newer agents with these um, you know, targeting epigenetics coming into the field. So let me just ask about using this. Are you, are you using tazimetastat preoperatively? Are you using it adjuvant? Do you think there's any role at, at this situation or is it relegated in the current environment as it's approved for, um, uh, for un, um, Inoperable, inoperable patients who cannot be cured by a definitive surgery. When we know the response rate is so high, what's, uh, what's your thought about its role in this space? I know, it. so far I'm still using it as defined for inoperable disease and the patients coming in, uh, you know, we might have that discussion because, you know, I mean, some patients might benefit and respond, but the response rate is still like 15%. So it's if they're clearly operable, I think that is still the standard unless, yeah. unless they're borderline operable, one could make the case of mm -hmm. giving them some neoadjuvant treatment and seeing how they do. Uh, but you'll have to do a quick check just to make sure that they don't lose the window of the surgical yeah. resection. So I think, you know, unless we get more data um, and maybe, you know, there is studies to look at a higher dose or we can basically mm -hmm. better define um, the response rate and which patients might benefit more, it would be difficult to bring it up to the frontline setting. Combinations, Combinations with, with chemotherapy. Combinations with chemotherapy also. And then, of course, more is to be learned. There is a warning about increased, I know it's less than 1%, but increase in leukemia, like T cell, yeah. lymphoma, the uh, you know, MDS and AML. Uh, so that needs monitoring as well. So I think we'll have to see how that you know, side effect or the secondary malignancy effect plays out. Great. Well, yeah. this is certainly an exciting new drug with a, with a great rationale that we now at least have in our arsenal to treat patients with epithelioid sarcoma. Yes, and we're showing the world that in this rare 1% of all sarcomas that we can actually do trials and get yeah. a drug to approval, so that is very exciting.